Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic, and welcome to Back Issue Bandits. It's basically a comic book haul. Uh, on my sabbatical of July, um, I didn't stop reading comics, I didn't stop buying comics, I still didn't stop searching for comics. Uh, everywhere I went, I made sure I found a comic book store to uh, find some uh, great finds and some bargains along the way. And that's what this first uh, episode of Back Issue Bandits is. Uh, these, All these comics came from either London or Birmingham. And for those of you who are interested in monetary value of, in the case, of how much I spent um, we, the range was from like 50p was the cheapest I probably spent about £2.50 on a couple of them because I needed them um, so we're going to kick off with the first batch because I've got two batches here um, the reason will become clear as I uh, talk about them now comic book collecting we all have um our little quirks um what we want to collect and how we want to collect i am quite eclectic in my comic book collecting and although there are definitely uh titles that i want to complete uh runs of i often find comics that i find oh they look intriguing and this is kind of the first batch uh the stuff that intrigued me the stuff that i'm what i call i'm a casual collector yes i'd like to have full runs of that particular series um but i'm not actively you know searching for them um so that's basically what this kind of batch of comics is and we start with uh one of the dc young animal imprints uh from their milk wars i don't know whether to call it a crossover or what because i don't really know a great deal about it but the cover really did appeal to me in that kind of it, it it's almost kind of meta in the fact that you know it's looking down on this map of the multiverse i think that was kind of created wasn't it by grant morrison um when he was doing that whole multiverse uh run and you know there's the whole there's coffee stains on it there's a mobile phone on it there's a laptop in the corner there's there's um there's an old Bernie Wrights and Swamp Think cover in the background. It's all very meta, very breaking fourth wall type stuff. And that just kind of intrigued me. I know nothing about the story. Um, although this says number one there, it says part four over there. So I'm guessing there are other parts to this on other titles. But yes, uh, that's the first issue of this haul. Um, this just kind of appealed for me because of its kind of cartoony comic bookness. It's the Inhumans. Um, it was a, I think it was a spin off or it came after kind of like stuff like Uncanny Inhumans called uh, Royals. And I think this very much took the Inhumans into space. I was tempted to buy it at the time. I don't know why I didn't, but I found it really cheap. Uh, issue number one. Uh, Blackwood from Dark Horse Comics. Oh, sorry, by the way, these are in no order whatsoever. I'll be jumping backwards and forwards from publishing house to publishing house. And um, again, not something I know a great deal about. It looks kind of horror-y. Um, and I had kind of seen bits online about it, but don't know a great deal. But it was dirt cheap. It's a number one from Dark Horse. I thought I'd give it a go. Um, there are tales, there are comics, and I don't necessarily do this a lot, but when it's Francesca Francovia, I will buy it regardless. I'm not saying that I don't have any interest in the character of the spirit. I have a lot of uh, back issues from all over the place, reprints, uh, reboots and the like, but... I mean, the cover stood out straight away for me. And of course, um, I really uh, enjoy Francesco Francovia's art and storytelling. So I thought definitely a pickup there. I'm not sure if I already had this or not. It was, if I remember, it was a pound um, and it's 80 pages. Um, it's got... Um, 
what looks like Swamp Thing on there. You've got Frankenstein there. Looks like it could be the Bride of Frankenstein there. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm guessing it's some sort of one-shot uh, anthology series. So it'll be interesting to see who's involved uh, in that. And this is one of the titles that I see knocking on. I don't often see them. Um, so I'm kind of a casual casual collector of it um, but anything Eric Powell does um, it is always going to be a, a great ride it's going to be fun it's going to be dark um, but I love this from Albatross uh, it's Hillbilly issue number eight and another bit of Eric Powell with a bunch of other creators uh, scary stories fit for kids it's spook house the creature from granny's pond a little bit of a homage to the creature from the uh blue lagoon the black lagoon i was gonna say the blue lagoon i think that's a totally different film <laughs> uh, but again it's eric powell so i love his art and i'm sure it's got um uh, obviously stories so there's going to be more than one in there that's issue number four Again, this is another title that I casually buy, despite the fact that I'm not picking up any current Batman titles at the moment. Um, I love picking up these old detective comics, or indeed any kind of Bat-related title. Uh, this is issue 601 from um, 89, so these are kind of like late 80s, early 90s. Uh, Alan Grant and Normal Brayfogle uh, did a bit of a run back then. Uh, they're not the most amazing stories, but I like the, the 80s, 90s style of art. Um, this is issue 609 with Anarchy. And issue 611, which was a penguin story. Um, I think you might just be able to tell it from the old monocle and the cigarette in the cigarette holder, which is kind of iconic for the penguin. Uh, I think this is one of the more recent Yusagi Yojimbo uh, stories from Stan Sakai. Uh, I believe he's kind of done away with the original numberings and uh, it's kind of like, I think it's a bit bit like, I think BPRD are doing it and Hellboy are doing it where they just go from number one and it's like this is three of seven and then they start again with a new story um, whenever they, I guess they feel like it. It's kind of an ongoing but without the, the scary, supposedly, numbering. Um, I love a good Marvel fanfare. I love picking these up when I find them. Uh, I tend to only pick them up when they are characters that I am particularly interested in. So as you can see from this, it's uh, a big old Doctor Strange story. Um, so that's uh, like another casual collector type of issue for me. Uh, Night Force, I don't often see these, but they're fantastic. Uh, Gene Colan and Marv uh, Wolfman. This is issue two. Um, I love I love reading this. I've got issue one somewhere, and I was very and I knew that was all I had because these I never find. Uh, but I was happy to find issue number two. Um, there's some great artwork, some great storytelling in this. I'm sure it probably wasn't a big hit at the time, but I clearly think it should have been. Uh, kind of mixing detective and the supernatural and horror. Uh, bringing together a kind of supernatural team but great stuff night force issue number two uh, sticking with the horror vibe it's clive barker's nightbreed um, i found uh, a few of the later series not so long ago um, and kind of really dug the kind of stories that bled out of this series um, from reading uh, issue three i think they kind of have reworked a little bit, expanded a little bit on the original movie, uh, Nightbreed. Uh, and then once they'd done with that, they continued with the kind of uh, stories about all the characters uh, within the Nightbreed universe. Um, but uh, from Epic Comics, uh, number three and number nine, you would not want to meet that gentleman. Uh, of uh, of a night down a dark alley but uh, again great stuff from Clive Barker I 
thought I'd try these. I saw these for, I think they were a pound each. Uh, people kind of raved about it at the time. Scott Snyder's All-Star Batman. Um, so I thought, given that they're cheap, I'll try them. And if I like them, I'll try and find the rest. Uh, All-Star Batman, issue number seven. Number eight. Plus, I saw Frank Avia's name on them, so I thought, woohoo. Uh, and also, just noticed there, Cam and Coley as well. Great artist on uh, Daredevil and Spider-Man uh, back some years ago. And number 11. Uh, so we'll, we'll try those out, see if they're of any good. Um, this is something that I started collecting. I don't know why at the time. I can't remember if Earth 2 World's End or it's Earth 2 Future something. I can't remember what it was. Um, but I kind of found a big batch of them really cheaply. And they were a fun read for what they were. I don't think they, they clearly haven't affected anything um, in the in the current state of DC Comics, I don't think. Um, but I've almost finished Earth 2 World's End series now, just a few more issues to complete that run. Uh, happy to find another issue of Tom Strong. Difficult that one, because it's Tom Strong and Tom Strange. Uh, it's one of those kind of alternate universe storylines uh, where there are different versions of Tom Strong. Uh, but great story from Alan Moore, art by Chris Sprouse. Another series that I like to pick up when I find them, a uh, bit tatty condition, but when you get them cheap, you don't really care. Uh, Conan the Barbarian, issue 175. And this great cover. Um, I need to find out who's done that because it, it's, it's, I don't know. There's something about it. It's, it's mesmerising. I think it's the eyes. Uh, issue 187. Uh, Mighty Thor, great red and black cover here. Uh, issue 416. Another title that I kind of casually buy uh, due to the fact that I think I bought a, this is going back a bit now, but I bought a huge box lot of comics off of eBay, which I've not done in years. Um, and there was a big batch of these on and I just began picking them up as and when I saw them as long as they were, were super cheap. And I like the character of the Thor and, and all the adventures that he takes on, but really dug this cover, so I picked that up. Uh, the Punisher, uh, issue 21, uh, one of the many titles uh, that came out uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And so, again, as, I, as and when I see them, I'll pick them up if I don't already have them. Uh, kind of dig this, uh, this full, I was going to say full frontal, <laughs> this full cover pose of The Punisher in the boxing ring. Um, and finally for this batch, uh, The Incredible Hulk, another title that I kind of dip in and out. Um, I always thought, you know, what stories, are they really going to be any good? And I just kind of got immersed in the Hulk's universe and the bits and bobs that I have read of it, I really enjoyed. So when I see them, I'll pick them up. Right, so this next batch of comics um, are definitely runs and series and titles that I am actively looking for. Uh, I'm quite serious uh, in completing, and this is one of them, uh, the DC Comics 1 million line. Um, and I've got a lot of these now. These are very difficult to find um, over here in the UK, uh, but this is the Young Justice. Um, the Young Justice title one shot that went on. Um, that's, I don't know if you can pick this up really, but when I first saw these, it's like there's a lot of pencilers, there's a lot of ink is going on here, and I just thought, oh god, this is going to be a mess. But it was actually uh, quite good. Um, they were stories told from each of these characters' perspectives. So they each got their own kind of artist, penciler and inker, uh, which kind of gave them all the stories kind of a distinct look. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised.
Uh, before Watchmen, uh, gradually uh, decreasing the number I need for all these spin-off series. Um, I've got now got all of Night Owl, Night Owl with this issue number two. Uh, J. Michael Straczynski and Andy Kubert and Joe Kubert on art and colours, I'm guessing. Um, so great stuff there. I do want to get all the Secret Wars spin-offs. Um, and Battle World spin-offs that came from Secret Wars 2, I guess you'd call it. Uh, not even 2, it's 3, if not 4, if you kind of think about it. But uh, this is Red Skull. This completes my run of Red Skulls. There were four issues, I believe. Um, strangely enough, despite the fact that there were a lot of these issues in this store in Birmingham, they were quite pricey, and I had to pay... Um, well basically full price for this uh full cover price which upset me a little because i never like paying full price uh for stuff that's been out for quite a while and clearly they can't get rid of the stock that they have uh but it i hadn't seen this anywhere else so i thought oh go on then uh, and it went in my pile um a series that i really should have picked up at the time and just went on issue by issue was Harrow County by Colin Bunn and Tyler Crook. Um, I don't know why, but this uh, list of comics uh, are not on my wants and needs list. So I'm not sure if I already have this. I hope I haven't, uh, but it's a great, great cover, great, scary, kind of psychotic uh, young woman there. And it's just a great story. Like I said, I don't know why I didn't start picking this up when it originally came out, but I'm gradually uh, bringing down the numbers that I need to complete that series because I believe it is now over. Uh, Shade of the Changing Man, um, uh, written by Peter Milligan, uh, started off with Chris Pacello on art and gradually um, morphed into different artists along the way. Uh, not many more issues for this particular volume of this series to go. Um, I love it. It's crazy, surreal, obviously you can see from the cover, kind of psychedelic craziness. Uh, Grendel, another series that I love, uh, come from Comico. Uh, issue number eight, very close to finally finishing this. Uh, issue number 16. Um, I have seen issue number one in a comic book store. Uh, I can't remember where it is now, but it's I think it's a place called Abington. Um, but it is way too expensive for, one, the condition it's in. And two, let's be honest, the popularity of Grendel isn't that high. Um, so it, it's every time I go in there, which isn't very often, to be fair. It's still there. Uh, it's still not gone down in price. Um, and I'm a worse and won't ask them to put the price down on it. And then I'll buy it. But hey-ho. Uh, Moon Knight. This is the Mark Spector Moon Knight run. Because there's lots of different ones of, of Moon Knight. Uh, this is an Infinity War crossover. But uh, I love the character of Moon Knight. Uh, I'm trying to complete the first, I think it's 150 issues. I think I stopped with a issue 150 or around that mark. And I'm, again, it's one of those series I'm so close to finishing, but just a, uh, a few more issues, issues are still eluding me. Um, and this is issue 51. And issue 55, so getting ever closer to completing that partial run and then we'll see how I feel from then on if I want to continue. Um, always great to have an X-Men, uh, some X-Men in my uh, back issue finds. Uh, Gambit Tail, uh, past story with Sabretooth in Paris. And another bit of Sabretooth, this time in Uncanny X-Men, up against Bishop. Issue 311, gradually knocking down that one. I did originally say I was going from issue 200 and up, 
to complete the run but then I started finding uh, ones between 150 and 200 really cheaply so I, I lowered it down to now I want to get 150 to when it ended uh, Daredevil um, I kind of come to the realization that there are just some books that i don't mind getting this nasty british pence um i can be a little bit snobby with some of my titles um but as much as i love daredevil and it's one of the titles that i do want to complete the run on um it's not one that i'm particularly bothered about these um, if i find them with the regular scent mark on them um, then i'll just replace them with those uh, as long as they're at a good price but this was a time when daredevil was teamed up with the black widow issue 98 jump up a little bit issue 199 and then jump up even more to 338 now, of course, it wouldn't be a back issue haul without that one series that I'm trying. It may never happen, but I'm trying. Fantastic Four, yes. Um, so excited for the return of this series. I believe it's coming out in August. Um, so I'm just happy to have a, a Fantastic Four title back um, on the Marvel roster. So... I have to get my FF um, fun, my FFF, uh, from my back issues. Issue 226. Issue 227. I do like it when I find these what-ifs. Um, I generally just buy the ones that have got kind of a, a Fantastic Four connection. Um, this one, what if the Fantastic Four battled Doctor Doom before they got their powers? Mm, we'll see how that goes. Um, then the Fantastic Four series that came out of Heroes Reborn uh, it re renumbered back to number one but gradually as you will see from the issues that I've got here um, we started seeing the legacy numbers come back in this is issue 23 26 number 30 really like that cover for some reason although it it looks a little awkward but when you look at it for long enough it's just a great cover i love it issue 31 issue 33 issue 43 as you can see they've started um, putting on the legacy number so this would have been issue 472 because obviously it was gearing up for an issue 500 wasn't it anniversary issue and finally issue number 62 which would have been issue 491 getting closer to that 500 uh fantastic for mark wade on this uh great run there from him and that's it for the first back issue bandits i hope you enjoyed that um thank you for joining me let me know in the comments section if you've read any of these books uh what are the titles um or kind of issues i should be looking out for that could be fun for me to find until then take care bye bye